K-I-L-R Killer Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to my tour, the world tour, around the world, <laughs> featuring Microsoft Flight Simulator 5.1. We are currently on the border of Michigan and Wisconsin at a little airport called King's Lando Lakes. And in this area, it really is just filled with lakes all over the place. It is really cool. And this airport that we're currently sitting at is one that I uh, created myself using dun, 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 dun. Scenery and Object Designer by Apollo. That's mainly because I couldn't find any uh, scenery that had it. And I'm not surprised. It's a really teeny teeny little airport but with the name Lando Lakes and you know the whole thing thinking about butter <laughs> I just thought it would be a neat place to land and as I was studying the area I saw these lakes I'm like oh this is cool plus I was just curious you know on the name uh, you know why is it called Land Land of Lakes or Lando Lakes there's actually two of them there's one here and there's another one that I saw in Minnesota, but it didn't have the number of lakes that uh, here in Michigan, Wisconsin has. And I have to correct uh, something from the last flight. The lakes are actually in the Wisconsin scenery, not the Michigan scenery. It, it's tough to figure out uh, because we're at the border of those two states. But uh, Anyway, let's talk about where we're going to be going. So here we are, King's Land of Lakes. You can see all the little lakes and stuff around here. We are going to be heading uh, this direction. Um, we can easily tune into Rhinelander right here and head at a vector of 0 to 1 this airway. And this will take us right here, Houghton. So we're going here to Houghton County Memorial, KCMX, right here on this peninsula right here. Yeah, we're getting ready for something big. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get everything set up. Okay, so Rhinelander, we still have tuned in. My goodness, we're like using this for almost everything. And we're going to tune this in to the 021. Right there. And then this is going to be Houghton. So one one two point eight. There we go, sixty seven miles. That sounds good. And as far as runways, I don't know, I'll look that up on my tablet as we're in flight and uh, we'll figure it out from there we'll 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 change this depending and I'll check to see if there's any ILS's or anything but I believe we are all set to go I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on 
once again um, we won't be doing any uh, ATC chatter it's just kind of nice to have a you know some peace and quiet <laughs> with the exception of me talking all the time but actually I'm considering on doing what I did the last time where I'll kind of st I'll, I'll step out and uh, turn the camera off and everything and you can just you know enjoy the flight all right get ourselves turned around here you dig all these trees <laughs> I put trees over there too My taxiway needs a little bit of improvement. set to go. Go ahead and rev this up here. Let's set our trim. Alright. That's the uh, grass runway, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Yeah, it's always cool to look at the airport as you're taking off. Say goodbye to the land of lakes. You know, land of lakes is actually made in uh, Wisconsin. It's uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota. It's, uh, it's supposed to be somewhere around Minneapolis. I was kind of looking that up. Oh, that's... DME says 666. At least it did. That's dangerous.
Yeah, this is going to be a nice long flight here. I don't know if I want to fly above the clouds. You now it would be kind of nice to take a look at the scenery. Assuming we don't get blown off course here by... But... Ready to? All the little roadways, big lake there, all the lakes and rivers. Just a neat area, man. I love to just take a road trip to Land of Lakes. It's just been really cool. But I was saying on the last flight, I don't know if you would actually see it from the ground. All the trees are probably covering all those lakes. But flying over it, oh wow, that would just be cool. would be my wife. <laughs> we're flying just... We're flying just under the clouds. Under the base of the clouds, I think. I think this is a good altitude. Alright, so while we're flying... I am going to do a little bit of talking here because I want to keep going with our flight simulator book. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm not going to be reading a whole, you know, like a whole bunch in every single, you know, each flight, just parts of it. So we're in part one, the world of flight simulator. All right, chapter one, your first solo flight. Your first Han Solo flight. In this chapter, you would take your Cessna Skylang 182RG out for its maiden flight. Don't worry, you don't need to know anything about flying. All you need are your sunglasses and a desire to see Chicago from the air. Landing will be accomplished via the Land Me feature, so you can sit back and enjoy the flight. You will take off from Meg's Field along Chicago's Lake Michigan waterfront. Then you'll take a leisurely flight over downtown Chicago. Once past Chicago, you will turn back and return to Meg's Field, whereupon the simulator's autopilot will land you safely without any intervention on your part. Along the way, you will see the photorealistic scenery around Meg's Field and the downtown scra skyscrapers of Chicago, including the Sears Tower and the Prudential Building. While enjoying the picturesque view, out the window, you'll also learn how to use some of aircraft's some of the aircraft's instruments and controls. If you're eager to fly or already somewhat familiar with flight simulator, you can skip ahead to the section titled "Take Off." Take off, eh? So yeah, so we've actually done this. Not only did we take off from Meg's Field to start off with, but when we went to Joliet, was it Joliet? trying to remember no it was before that we went to Lansing midway and then we did a touch and go at Meg's and then went to Joliet after that so so we did actually um, do this just not all in you know one little thing starting flight simulator I think we can skip that <laughs> Using the keyboard and mouse to open menus. Well, let's not worry about that. You can um, use the keyboard if you press Alt and then O. That'll open up the options menu. So all all this stuff up here. So Alt O, Alt V, Alt W, Alt S. That's probably Alt N, Alt S. Oh. 
Um, there's not going to be two alt S's. Just get a mouse. <laughs> Pre-flight preparation. Learning the six basic flight instruments of the standard instrument cluster. All right. Let's now turn to your cockpit instrumentation and learn more about the six basic flight instruments that almost every aircraft uses. The three pitot-static instruments. Take a moment to glance over your cockpit instruments and controls. It's better to do this now than later when you are being fished out of Lake Michigan because you didn't know where your controls were located. Or you didn't understand one of your flight instrument readings. There are six basic flight instruments. The first three to be discussed are the so-called pitot-static instruments because their measurements and displayed readings are derived from responses to, an, to air pressures in the pitot-static system. The pressure altimeter, the vertical speed indicator, and the airspeed indicator all calculate the amount of air pressure being rammed into the pitot tube. The pitot tube is a hollow centrical pipe mounted externally on the leading edge of the wing, nose, or tail of the aircraft. Each of these three instruments then compares the pitot tube pressure to the air pressure in a static chamber where the air is not being subjected to any motive forces. The calculated pressure difference is, is displayed as the true airspeed in knots, nautical miles per hour, in the air, not on the ground. This is on the airspeed indicator, rate of climb or descent in hundreds of feet per minute on the vertical speed indicator, and the altitude measured in feet over mean sea level, because it's mean, <laughs> on the altimeter. Keep an eye on stuff here. The airspeed indicator. Looking at your airspeed indicator as shown in 1.3, well, we, we know what it is. It's right here. You can see that pre present. Uh, yeah, whatever. The altimeter. Your altimeter resembles a clock with 10 divisions instead of 12. For the large hand of the altimeter's clock, each number making marking represents 100 feet. Although the smallest reading is 50 foot increments, since the large hand is almost over the 6. This means the aircraft is at 500 feet or so. Notice that this means you are approximately 590 feet above sea level, but not 590 feet above the ground. Many pilots have crashed because of forgetting the crucial distinction between above ground level and mean sea level. The smaller hand of the altimeter's clock measures the altitude in thousands of feet, but since it has not reached the one yet, the altimeter shows that the aircraft is below 1,000 feet. If the small hand were to travel past the 1, then you would add to your altitude 1,000 feet for each number it passes. Then we got the vertical speed indicator. The vertical speed indicator lets you know how many hundreds of feet per minute you are descending or ascending at any given time. At present, it shows no activity. Well, this is it right here. The three gyroscopic instruments. The remaining three instruments, the attitude indicator, um, this one here, the turn indicator here, and the heading indicator here, are known as gyroscopic instruments because their readings are obtained from the inertial frame of reference of a spinning gyroscope. The gyroscope instruments provide information about the aircraft's direction and attitude. The attitude indicator, because it's an attitude. The attitude indicator, also known as the artificial horizon, tells you the airplane's attitude at all times. It shows the actual pitch and roll of the aircraft in relation to the ground. This gives the pilot an internal horizon inside the cockpit that serves as a reference point for flying the aircraft in any kind of weather, night or day. The brown colored portion of the attitude indicator's ball represents the ground or horizon. The two wh white horizontal lines in the center of the scope represent the aircraft wings, right here. 
For example, if you bank the airplane to the left, the colored half of the horizon ball will rotate to the left. If you pull up the nose, the colored half of the ball will drop below the level of the wings, as indicated by the two white horizontal lines, thereby showing the aircraft nose is pitched upwards from the ground horizon. Note, this doesn't necessarily mean you are climbing. Yeah, that's where you want to look at this here. So, we've all seen this. If you've been following my flights, then you know we've already been seeing this. I'm going to bring up our throttle some here. We're under 80 knots. The turn indicator. The turn indicator measures the turning rate of the aircraft. Right here. It also shows the amount of slip or skid the aircraft is experiencing in a turn. That is this here. This is your slip. In auto-coordinated flight, you will not need to concern yourself with this instrument. However, if you fly with the pedals simulating the rudder controls of a real aircraft, you must watch this gauge in order to make a stable turn. Half the time, I don't even use the rudder. <laughs> I just turn. The heading indicator, which is this right here. The last instrument, the heading indicator, or directional gyro, shows the compass heading the aircraft is currently on. It differs from the magnetic compass in that, it, in that a highly accurate gyroscope provides a precise, instantaneous display of the course heading, even when the aircraft experiences pronounced accelerative forces like when climbing, diving, or turning. The main drawback of the directional gyro is it tends to drift away from an accurate compass reading over time due to precisional errors in the rotating gyroscope. From time to time, therefore, you must recalibrate the direction of gyro so it agrees with the magnetic compass. Here's your magnetic compass right here. And that is all we're going to do right now. So as promised, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a step back and let you folks relax and enjoy the uh, scenery. So I'll be back um, when we get closer to the airport.
All right, I am back. Your uh, your captain <laughs> on this flight. All right, so we are 17 miles away from the airport, and I believe Houghton is right up here. I went ahead and tuned in the ILS with uh, runway. 31. So I got everything all set up here. So let's go ahead and we're going to alter course. I'm going to go off this direction here. Nav 2 is currently set to Houghton, so we were going straight for it. We're going to go over this way, though. I think that mountain over there in the distance, you see that? Head over to the right of that. So I believe this is the end of the peninsula here on the south side. And there's the other there's the other part right behind us. go. We got our vertical indicator now. That's good. Oh. It's interesting. On the uh, approach chart, it says DME required. Uh, except this ILS doesn't uh, have DME apparently in 5.1, but uh, come on, turn around there. There we go. With my Windows tablet here, which you can't seem to see. There you go. You can see the approach. See, it says DME required. We need to be approaching at 2,800 feet, so I think we're a little too high. There we go, 2,800 feet, 25. I don't use my tablet very much, but... Uh, I do use it for, like some reading and I just recently thought hey you know maybe it's a good idea to you know I know a lot of pilots have I I uh, iPads in their uh, plane I'm not a Apple fan so I figured oh, I'll just use a uh, Windows tablet That's Houghton over there. Now, see, if um, we didn't have the Michigan scenery installed, you would not see any of this stuff. I think there'd be like a line of mountains along the uh, peninsula, but the river that goes in here wouldn't be here, the roads. So... 
kudos to the uh, to the author. Okay, let's go ahead and turn autopilot off here, and we'll. Try to keep with that uh, VSI indicator. About 10 miles out. Oh, that didn't work. One thing of flaps. The airport's going to be on the other side of the river, so it's going to be on this side over here. As a matter of fact, that's it right there. Did you see that green? The white and green? That's the beacon. So it's right over there. See, we look at it on a map as far as the peninsula, but then just kind of getting into the sim here and, and just seeing is, I don't know, just kind of neat. And you see this and it's kind of like, oh man, can't wait to see this and... 2002, 2004, FSX. See, 2002 and FSX, I'm using F-Scene. Uh, I'm using the original F-Scene for 2002, and then I'm using F-Scene 4X for 2004. But I don't know if F-Scene 4X is the same thing because it would be different if I was using on FSX. So I don't know if the what I have for Flight Simulator 2004 is the same as 2002. It might be, or as I didn't it, it intentionally mean that to happen. Not using it on FSX. I've got Orbix for that. It was about $250 to upgrade the Orbix to Orbix, uh, the vector and the land class and the base. Uh, it was worth it though. And it gives because FSX a really nice overhaul. fly along the coast here until this starts to move.
Ooh, it's turning. It's moving. Okay, another thing of flaps here, and our landing gear. There's the runway. I'm trying to get us uh, at the right height. Maybe that ILS is wrong. The vertical indicator. Because it looks like we're at a good descent here, but it's hard to, hard to tell. Looks like we're getting close to the ground. <laughs>
Got some airport buildings over there. So there should be some taxiways. Or at least a taxiway. Shake, shake, shake your booty. <laughs> shake, 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 shake your booty. Disco, in case you're wondering, it's a big song. KC and the Sunshine Band, I believe. Some of you watching this may be like, who? <laughs> who? No, that's another group. Good group, too. Alright. We're here at Houghton. At uh, the Houghton uh, Memorial. Houghton County Memorial, I believe, is, is, is it. But, um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining me on this flight. Um, a little lengthy, not too bad. But again, I hope you enjoyed the uh, nice, relaxing moment without me um, talking. Uh, like I said, I can do that a little bit more often if you like that. And other than that, check this out on the other simulators. And be sure to join me on the next leg of this flight because it is going to be big. It's going to be major. All right. So thanks. And I will see you next time. Don't forget that we're doing this same flight in the other simulators. So check those out if you'd like to make some comparisons or just relive some of those old fun memories of the past. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future flight simulator content. And thanks very much for watching.